My name is Emily Reed, and it's my great pleasure to moderate tonight's q and I'll repeat your questions so that everyone can hear them. Uh, please wave if I can't see you above the, uh, the glare. Uh, without further ado, please join me in welcoming back to the stage Martin McDonough, Francis McDormand, and Sam Rockwell. I need to give them a minute for their standing ovation. Uh, Thank you. I think this is a sign that I'm going to ask my first question be about uh, casting. Um, for me, this is a beautifully, beautifully cast film, almost as though these, written, these roles were written for your incredible cast. Supporting roles, lead roles, all around. Can you discuss the casting process as, as well as your, your writing process a little bit? Um, uh, the script was written for two particular people, and they happen to be uh, here right now. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wrote it, wrote the, the, the part for Francis, and we talked about it about, uh, I wrote it about eight years ago, this, this script, and uh, sent it to you maybe four years ago or something, and I wrote it with Sam in mind too, as I did um, Seven Psychos, um, and um, I know that no one else could have played it if Francis didn't. Uh, for sure, so I'd have been fucked if she'd said no. <laughs> Luckily, uh, she didn't. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, but the writing of it, it, it was a pretty quick uh, process, but writing a character, a strong woman character, was kind of freeing in some, way, be some ways because I didn't know what the hell she was going to do from scene to scene, uh, just, just as you guys probably didn't too. And there's something kind of joyful about that. And I hadn't really done that for a long time, to write a strong uh, female lead. So uh, it was a joy to write, and it was, uh, it was the happiest film experience I've, I've had. It was like working with a repertory company of uh, great, great actors. Um, but yeah, I think we got on pretty good, didn't we? <laughs> Francis, you have an incredible body of work, and yet I think this might be one of my favorite roles and performances of yours. Uh, this, Thank you. This film has such, that character is such an interesting character, and it has such an interesting tone to this film, in that you are a woman who's going through grief, and we're laughing, in, and you are laughing as well, as, and, and raging throughout. Can you talk a bit about the tone, it's such an interesting tone that you found in, in between sorrow and comedy uh, throughout this role. It is because it's based on a real screenplay and it was written as a literary piece of work. It wasn't a blueprint, it wasn't an imp improvisation, it was a well thought out story and document and it fills up to the level of uh, Greek tragedy for me. And I think that what we were able to inhabit is, <laughs> oh, um, was we're, we're both trained theatrical actors and we've done a lot of it. We've got a lot of experience. So to be able to be given the opportunity to step into something like that, we were well armed. Uh, yeah, I would concur with that. Absolutely. <laughs> Medea, Trojan women, Oedipus, you know. Yeah, exactly. All the good stuff. I've got, I've got to read some of that stuff. They sound good. Yeah, yeah. yeah all right. So I'm going to tell a little story really quick. We want to hear it. I was in a production of the Scottish play that Martin came to see, and afterwards we were talking. I'm going to. I have to. And we were talking about his, uh, his screenplay, and he, I said, you're no Shakespeare, Martin. And he said, no, not yet. <laughs> Well, he can Sha take it. Shakespeare never did any films, so that's <laughs> how so I win. <laughs> I it was tongue-in-cheek even at the time. 
You might have hit it this time. You might be there now. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I want to open it to the audience. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Over here in white. Hey. So I'll just repeat it quickly for those in the balcony. The question's for Sam. And what were your thoughts when you first read this character that Martin you know, had written? It's like, oh, it's like a Christmas present. You know, you just, you just open up this, this script and it's just, it's like a Christmas present. It's amazing. And every page you're like, what's happening? Oh my God, this is happening now, you know? It, it's, it's really a wonderful thing. Like Francis said, it's a, it's a finished piece of work. It's a, it's, sometimes you gotta talk yourself into a job, you know? And, and this, you don't have, this is what we call a no-brainer. Yeah. Go ahead. I hate repeating this question, because some people always want to know what happens after this, the, the credits roll, but were you tempted to uh, write an ending where they catch the guy? No, that was never really uh, part of the game plan. Um, I, I, I didn't know what the ending was going to be when I set out. I didn't want, know what the hell was going to happen uh, at the start. I just had the idea of uh, the image of the billboards and the pain of the mother who, who put them there, but I really didn't know what the hell was gonna happen. Um, and scene by scene, uh, it just kind of developed. But I think when I got to the end, I didn't want it to be wrapped up with a bow because most murder cases aren't, I guess. Uh, and I, I wanted for us to be left with something more important than that. Because I think sometimes when there's a, like a crime film and things are solved, you don't have to think about it anymore. And it's it's, it's almost pointless. Um, but this, it being open-ended, it, it leaves a lot of questions uh, about you know where they're going, what they're going to do, how much they've changed is the most important part, I think, throughout the film. Uh, they're so different at the end than they were at the beginning. Um, and those questions to me are much more important than, than a, a simple solution to the crime. I want to go further back uh, in, in black shirt. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. So quick paraphrase, uh, what, how does Martin see a uh, difference in his work about Irish characters versus American characters? Um, honestly, I don't really see any difference. Um, uh, I guess I've done two American films now, so and, and no Irish films, but most of the plays are Irish. But I, I approach them all in the same way, I guess. Um, they, they've all got, I guess, a, a dark comedic uh, bent. Um, but it's all, I'm always trying to be true to, to, to someone in a small Irish town as I am in, uh, to a small American town. So I don't really see too much of a difference. I think there's, this film has, has maybe got a lot more heart than... I, I think there was always heart in, in the play. <laughs> Revelations. Um, I think there was always sort of heart in the plays, but I think in some of them it was a little hard to see or it only lasted just, you know, in the course of two lines. But I think this... Because of the subject matter, uh, I think we couldn't get away from that, uh, that, that it had to be, uh, the starting point was so dark that there had to be some kind of heart throughout it and definitely at the end of it. Uh, down towards the aisle, with the curly hair and then behind, yes. Thank you. <laughs> For Francis, what characteristics do you share with her character? Should we call my family? <laughs> um, one of the great gifts of being an actor 
is that you get to explore places that have nothing to do with you. Please hold my hand. <laughs> Please, all the gods never put me in Mildred's position. <laughs> so no, don't know about that. But I have a son who I cherish and I love. And um, I think even if you're not a parent, the position that, so forget about that. We don't need to talk about that. Uh, I, yeah, I, I get, I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 60 years old. I'm a woman. Uh, you know, I've had a few things that pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> So, I've never been as furious as Mildred, but I had enough, you know, to work on. <laughs> uh, there was another one along the aisle. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. McDonough, you uh, just talked about how much you enjoyed the process of being surprised. Why did you come up with these eight? So, once you then had your finished product and you added these tremendous cast, what was maybe the next surprise? So for those in the balcony, the question is, uh, Martin touched on the fact that there were surprises as he didn't quite know where the script was going to go and then he put a, a cast together. Did, did, were there other surprises along the way through this process? <clears throat> yeah, I think this is the first film where I've kind of uh, grown up a bit as a director and, and kind of uh, not been quite so pedantic about the script or, or be open to uh, uh, a bit more... Uh, a bit more happening that I wasn't in control of, maybe. Collaboration. Collabor yeah, I hate to say the word, but collaboration. <laughs> the C word, I call it. <laughs> um, and I remember when uh, we were doing the, uh, the deer scene, and I think it was like a week and a half in, um, Francis was just so amazing in it, I, I realized because we had, we had, we'd had little arguments about like 5% of script things debates, before, debate, debate. debates, arguments, um, <laughs> collaborative arguments. And uh, I, I remember seeing her in that scene and I thought, shut up, Martin, just, you know, whatever it, whatever it takes, she's so good. This whole film is going to be amazing if you just back off a bit. Fucking A, man. We have time for one final question in white over here. So the question is about uh, his role as writer-director. Does he think that that's an essential union to be both writer and director? Um, when I'm writing the films, it's always uh, to direct them. Um, um, because, as we know, unless, unless you're there to protect it, you know, the writer is the, the lowest form of life in Hollywood. <laughs> Um, and and you have to but actually, but writing the plays, you've got a lot of control, and, and that doesn't ever happen. So I've never directed a play of mine, and I've never felt the desire to. Um, but uh, yeah, but film-wise, yeah. But for me, it's 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 like an extra process. I, I write it, and it's characters and story. But I haven't really visualized it until I go back and storyboard it afterwards. So uh, it's like a two two part uh, process. Um, yeah. I want to thank you very much for bringing this beautiful film to us at TIFF. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for your enthusiastic reaction. Thank you. We have three more screenings of three billboards, so tell everyone and vote on your way out. Thank Woo! you.